All right, guys, welcome back. And now we're going to be taking a look at the sine rule, which is our first uh, trigonometric uh, rule that we're going to be examining. Now, here it is that we have the formula for the sine rule. I'm going to explain this uh, in a sec. Now, it says the sine rule is applicable when you have a full pair. That is, for example, uh, a value for big A and little a. Now, remember we said that big A uh, a represents angles and little a represents length of side so this would be an angle at a vertex and this would be um, the opposite side to this angle which would be the length of a particular side now if you look carefully you will be seeing three pairs here is a pair here's another pair and here's another pair so you have three pairs now the reason why we have three pairs here is because we're dealing with a triangle. So this would be the angle at vertex A on the side opposite that vertex is uh, little a, which is the length of that side. Uh, this would be the angle at vertex B. And then the side opposite vertex B is little b. Uh, this would be the angle at vertex uh, C. And this would be the side opposite um, that vertex. Now, even though you have three pairs, to solve any particular problem involving the sine rule or where the sine rule is applicable, you only need two pairs. So you can either, um, depending on what information is provided and what they're asking you to find, you're going to end up either using this, right, or this, or this, all right? So it depends on the, the question. And the information given that will determine which two pairs you use. Now, one thing is for certain, you must have a situation where you have a full pair in order to use a sign rule. So, depending on the question and depending on which two pair you're going to have to use, you can't just pick any two pair to use. You have to use the specific combination depending on what it is that they give you in terms of information. And also, in terms of what they're asking you to find, but there must be a full pair. So in the diagram that you're looking at based on a question, there must be a full pair in order for you to use sine rule. I'm gonna explain that more clearly when we look at an example. So even though you have three pairs in the formula to answer a specific question where the sine rule can be used, it's two pairs that you're gonna need and it's not just to pick in any two, it must be depending on the information given in the question. Now, let's take a look at an example. Now, example one, you're clearly seeing here a right angle triangle. And again, I'm restating that, that trig rules can be used to all triangles and they're showing you um, different combination of triangles, etc. So, example one, we have a right angle triangle here. Obviously, this triangle is called triangle ABC where the capital letters are given at vertices, which mean they represent the angle. So the angle at vertex A is 62 degrees, the angle at vertex B is 90 degrees, and of course, if we needed to find this angle here, we could at vertex C. Now, it says calculate the length of side AC. Now, based on the fact that uh, you've already done trig ratios, uh, it would mean you could have used trig ratios to answer this question, but we're not gonna use trig ratios uh, because we're learning about the sine rule. We're gonna apply the sine rule to solve this question. Now, again, before you use any trig rule, you have to label the triangles. Remember what was said? We have to put on the common letters uh, if they're not there. And again, if a triangle was given without the vertices, you can just put on the capital letters and then the corresponding common letters afterwards. But they've already given us the capital letters in this diagram, so we can proceed. So you have to label before proceed before um, you proceed in trying to answer the question using a trig rule. So again, capital A, the side opposite that is little a. So little a is also the same as side BC and the length of side BC is seven. So little a is seven meters. Vertex B, the side opposite vertex uh, B is little b. And again, little b represent the length of AC and also the side opposite vertex C is little c. So I've now put on a common letter. So you're clearly seeing the capital letters, which is for the angles, and the common letters, which is for the length of sides. Now it says calculate the length 
of side AC. So we're going to go ahead and determine now which correct pairs that we have to use. Remember, even though three pairs are present, we can only use two. And the two that we use is depending on the information given. And again, in order for us to use sine rule, we must have a full pair. So the first thing we're going to do is look to see if we have a full pair, meaning, for example, a big B and a little B. Um, are you seeing a full pair here? And yes, we do have a full pair because we have big A, which is 62 degrees, and little A, which is 7. That's what we mean by a full pair. Now, if we didn't have a full pair, we wouldn't be able to, to use sine rule to answer this question. So you have to have a full pair. And if you can clearly see here, we have big A, which is 62 degrees, and little A, which is 7. So we're going to go ahead and work this question. So the full pair that we have is A, so that would be sine A over little a, and that would be equal to, and the next pair now is depending on what it is that they're asking us to find. This is the full pair that we've decided um, is available and we have to use, and then we have to determine now the other pair is based on uh, what it is they're asking us to find, and they're asking us to find uh, AC, and AC is also little b. So AC is also little b. So based on the fact that we're finding AC, which is also little b, that means we are forced to use sine b over little b, that pair involving b. We could not have used c because that would not have made any sense, as in sine c over little c. So this is how you determine the correct two pairs to use. So we go ahead now and plug in the formula, plug in the values at the corresponding uh, spots. Now, you have four pieces of information, angle, length of side, angle, length of side. Now, in order for you to be able to solve this question, you must have three available pieces of information, and the one that is missing is what is, is the one that you need to find. So the angle at vertex A is 62 degrees, so I'm going to put that there, over little a, which is 7. The angle at vertex B is 90 degrees, here it is, the angle at vertex B is 90 degrees, and by the way, this is the only um, trick tool, as in the sine rule or the cosine rule, when we get to that, where we can have 90 degrees being used in the calculation. Remember, when you're using trig ratios, 90 degrees cannot be used in trig ratios. But because we're doing trig rules, 90 degrees can be used in the calculation. Okay? If it was a trig ratio, you couldn't do this. All right? So let's continue. Over little b, so we're going to put that back. And then we proceed with the work, you know. So on your calculator now, you're going you're gonna to punch in sine of 62 degrees. So the sine of 62 degrees is 0.8829. Let's use four decimal places for accuracy. 0.8829. So I'm just going to put that. 0.8829 over 7. And the sine of 90 degrees, that's always going to be 1. So the sine of 90 is equal to 1. So that's going to be 1 over B. And then what you're going to do now is don't confuse yourself with the work, you know, right? Just focus on doing this on a calculator, right? So we're going to divide 0 0.8829 by 7. So 0 0.8829 divided by 7, that gives us 0 0.1261. And we're sticking with four decimal places in the body of the work, you know, for accuracy. 0 0.1261 is equal to 1 over B. And then now you always, always cross multiply by the denominator. So you're going to have B times 0 0.1261, which is equal to 1. And of course, B is going to be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.1261. And 1 divided by that 1 divided by 0 0.1261 gives us 7.93. So B is equal to 7.93. And we're dealing with meters here because it's a length that we're finding. So always put the correct unit. So this is meters. And also now, they didn't ask us anything about B. We just use B based on the fact that we have to label a triangle. But you have to now remember what B represents, and that is the length of AC. So therefore, AC 
equals 7.93 meters and that would be example one now i hope you guys found this video insightful and i'll see you guys on the next video